Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me at the Market Site in Times Square, New York City, we have Priscilla Sai. She is the founder of Coco Kind. We're going to learn about social impact investing and from Wall Street to skincare. It's great to have you with us. Thanks for joining us at Market Site. And you know what? Social impact through business is really a, a key area for, for every vertical right now. Tell us more about that. Yeah, so I'm a really big believer that you can have symbiotic relationships between everybody in your entire network. So whether it's your suppliers or your customers or your vendors, that you can really create a business that's good for the environment, it's good for the customers, and also make money and be profitable. And it doesn't have to be this one or the other trade-off. So I've always been super inspired by this idea of conscious business and being transparent, being good to the environment, being good to our people. Um, and that's really the value that we've created Coco Kind on. Yeah, I mean, consumer habits, they care about, especially the younger yeah. generation, your millennial, Gen X, Gen Z, uh, that's part of their, their purchase plan. Yeah, they, yeah. They're specifically looking for that. Now, and it shows in the numbers too, Global natural and organic market's gonna reach 23.6 billion by 2025. That's less than five years away. That's a big number. Yeah, it's been pretty amazing. I think uh, the natural and organic players, especially the indie players, whether it's food or beverage or skincare and in our world, um, have really led the way in terms of making values at the forefront of business, um, leading people in the right direction when it comes to ingredients, focus, supply chain, really understanding what you're putting on your skin, what, what you're putting in your body, and I think it's the small players that have actually been the biggest examples so far. All right. Now, I love these kinds of stories from Wall Street to skincare. I went from equity trading to media, totally unexpected. Yeah. So I want to hear your story. What were you doing on Wall Street? And yeah. what was the genesis to the switch? Yeah. So my most recent position, I was in equity research at JP Morgan. Mm -hmm. So I covered food and food retail stocks, ranging from Whole Foods to Annie's to Heinz. Um, and my background with skincare is actually super personal. And I had struggled with skincare for over six, seven years. And every day was a really big struggle for me to deal with my skin and really be comfortable with myself, both physically and mentally. And when I looked to the beauty industry, I didn't feel like I had a place. I didn't feel like I trusted the ingredients and the transparency and also could afford all the millions of beauty products out there that were super expensive. And so that led me to really diving into the skincare industry more for personal reasons. And because I have a mom who's an entrepreneur, I always kind of knew that I wanted to start a business. Mm -hmm. So while I loved equity research and I loved getting to know consumer companies, that's such a passion of mine, I knew that at one point I would take the take the leap to become an entrepreneur. Yeah, and that's amazing. Think of how many people you helped that might have been in the same situation as you. So yeah. that, that's amazing that you've done that. Now, supporting female entrepreneurs specifically, tell us more about that and the social impact business. Yeah, so in 2019, actually 2018, sorry, we launched our Coco Kind Impact Foundation where we provide financial grants to female founders in the health wellness and sustainability industries, ranging from $5,000 to $10,000. Um, so far, we've given 13 grants away, and it's been really amazing to support women who are just getting started. They may not have had the financials or the background to seek institutional funding yet, but we also want to give them a platform to know that they can do it and also be a mentor mm -hmm. when they have questions that they're too scared to ask. And that was my next question to you. How important is mentorship, particularly when you're looking to um, help grow female-owned businesses? Yeah, I mean, I think it's something that any founder will know. You're so busy on a day-to-day -day basis that you don't necessarily automatically make the time to find a mentor or to ask mentor questions. That's something that I learned in the first few years of business that I didn't really have mentors and I felt like I was really doing things alone. And over the past two years, I'd say, I have, I've really built so many relationships with great mentors, both women and men. And that has been so helpful for me and feeling like I'm, it's a little bit less lonely and a little bit more comforting. So that's definitely something that I wanna provide to the impact um, grantees that we have as part of our program. All right, Priscilla, thanks so much for joining us. At thank Market you. Site. Thanks for having and me. And thank you for joining me on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.